Over the past 30 years, one thing has always been the case. Whether it's the current USB version, the older USB version, parallel port, or even Atari, Steinberg software and dongles have gone hand in hand. But all of that changes with today's release of Dorico 4 and the Steinberg Activation Manager. But what does that mean for us in real terms when we're using music software, particularly if you're a Cubase user and this is coming to you later in the year? Well, let's take a look. So all these examples will be shown on a Mac, but it's exactly the same on Windows. It looks almost identical apart from font changes. So there's no procedural or functional differences. So first things first, let's run the activation manager as you would do normally. So once you'd installed it, you'd see the screen. You need to sign in. Now for this, you'll need to have a Steinberg account. If you haven't got one, as it says on screen, it will create one for you as you go, but your serial number for your software will be attached to that account and you will be able to see it online. So we're just going to sign in. So this just takes you to the Steinberg site and you can sign in with the account you've created before or create an account either way. And then you will need to activate the application. So this is communication between your browser and the activation manager. So it will probably appear differently if you're using Chrome or Edge, etc. I'm using Firefox because, uh, again, I'm one of those people. But I just click choose application, open link, and then I'll get signed in. So now you can see the activation manager. I'm signed in on that account. I can click here to see my account and get a link to an online account, and I can see any products which I've got which are either activated or not activated. Now, at the moment, obviously, there's not a lot in there, but you can imagine being able to manage those via activated and not activated status, but all the ones that are linked to your account uh, will be useful in the future. So let's just activate Dorico Pro, as that's what's come out today. So we click activate. There's a bit of online action behind the scenes, and then this is now activated, as you can see here. Now we can run the software. So it's as simple as that. There's not really much more to say. So if I now close the activation manager and run Dorico, it works without issue. So it's contacted the activation manager in the background and checked that everything's okay. But what about if you don't have a license activated on your machine at the time you run the program? So once again, here I am launching Dorico 4. And we can see it takes us to the activation manager. And at the moment, it says no license found. But in fact, if I dismiss that, we can see what I need to do is to activate it. I can activate that license and then I'll be able to run Dorico as normal. So here you can see I'm signed into Steinberg Activation Manager on an account which doesn't have any licenses attached to it. So this is this is like having an empty dongle. This isn't going to do anything. We're not going to be able to use any software. But this is a situation you may find yourself in. And if you do, you'll need to go to the site, make sure you can get your programs activated and attached to your account, and then you'll be in business. Generally, this will happen by you getting an access code, which you enter into the Steinberg Download Assistant, which you're signed into. And when you do that, the software will be allocated to the account you're signed into, and then it should all be good from there on in. So multiple user accounts. So in this, what I'm talking about is having multiple accounts on the same machine. And this does work, but at the moment, the way that it works is you use an activation per user account. So my Mac is set up like this. I have one for screen capturing these kind of videos. I have one for general sort of everyday use. I have another one for screen capturing different types of videos as well. They each have specific settings. And at the moment, the way that it's set up is I have two activations used on this machine, one for one account where I'm using it while I'm using the internet, as it were, and one for the screen capture account. There are plans in the future to allow the activation manager to store the activation files in a shared folder which will allow one activation per machine rather than per user account but that doesn't exist at the moment but we've been promised that it's something that came up in the many discussions which have been to do with this 
So hopefully in the future that will be the case. But at the moment, with the, the limitation of three activations at any one time, it's not the end of the world. When it was two, it was a little more uh, tricky. But with three, that's eased things up significantly. So at the moment, while there are future plans to make this easy, it's not the end of the world. Unless, of course, you have more than three accounts on one machine and then you're going to have to deactivate, etc. So if, like me, on your main DAW, you're running a dual boot system, although the pandemic has meant most of my DAW stuff has been actually online, so I haven't been using my main DAW boot I've been using, like the internet boot, which was always the secondary purpose of it, but there we go. It's much the same as the current uh, multi-user setup in that you will need to activate each installation, the operating system that you've got. Again, depending on your setup, you may have shared folders and files in future, which may allow that to share an activation, although I think it will be a little different if there are different operating systems. Not sure on the technicalities, but certainly, again, this is another thing which had been brought up with the developers, and they seem pretty receptive to being able to do this kind of thing. It doesn't look like they're trying to nail you down all the way. They're, they're trying to make it so this can work for you, but you don't have to have a dongle. So... Hopefully in the future that will be the case, but say at the moment it's definitely still a separate activation. So with my dual boot Windows DAW, I will need to use two activations, one for the internet side and one for the music side, which doesn't go on the internet generally. So in terms of site licenses, this is another thing which is on the horizon. So for educational site licenses, etc., I don't see that as this much of a limitation at the moment because there aren't multi-user dongles available. If you've ever been in the unfortunate position of having to run a school uh, Q-based lab, etc., you'll know there's a dongle per machine. Uh, you, you have to find some way of physically uh, securing those and making sure they don't get stolen, etc. So this isn't something that already exists it's being taken away but it will be there in the future where you will have multi-user site licenses and manageable but that's not there at the moment so that's something which unfortunately you're going to have to wait for but it will definitely be a, a real boon to people who have to manage these because it can be a complete nightmare particularly upgrade time because you you often ended up having to enter 30 or 40 different codes into e-licenser which was a miserable experience which i'm never going to repeat one way or another So limitations. So this is talking about the limitations which are placed upon you by the licensing system. Now, I think it's only fair to compare this with the dongle system. So the dongle system allows you effectively to license it on as many machines as you want, providing you have the dongle. It means you can only run it on one machine at a time. The Activation Manager originally was only going to allow you to activate two machines at a time. Uh, this has been up to three. But given that, providing you've got an internet connection, you can deactivate that machine really quickly and then activate another one. I don't think it's that much of a limitation. I'm sure there are uh, numbers available. Certainly, I know I only use my license on three separate installations regularly. So generally, it goes between my two on my Windows DAW and my one on my MacBook. So three will mean I don't have to keep deactivating and reactivating, etc. Now, the other limitation was that you would need to regularly phone home, effectively reactivate the software every 30 days. This has been removed. So once you're activated, uh, you're done and you don't need to reconnect to the Internet, which is a good idea for professional DAW users because often... Those DAWs won't regularly go on the internet. Certainly my uh, music installation doesn't regularly do that. And I think this is a positive move. So in terms of downsides, there's one which springs to mind, which is if you have hardware, which is, let's say, a bit out of date, but works perfectly well, and it's using an older version of whatever operating system. So let's say it's just an old Windows system that never goes on the internet, works perfectly well, doesn't need to be updated, doesn't need to be upgraded, etc. And you, for whatever reason, you need to reinstall Windows and you would need to reinstall the Activation Manager. Uh, but that was no longer a supported version of the operating system. 
that could be an issue. So providing the protocol, the activation manager protocol doesn't change, this shouldn't be a problem. But this is one of those things, it's only fairly niche, but it's the kind of thing where it wouldn't be the case with the dongle because the dongle and the software that you downloaded 15 years ago, providing they're still working, they would always work. So with all of these online schemes, there's always the the issue of probably not what if Steinberg goes bust because that seems pretty unlikely, but what if they don't support your hardware anymore and they've changed the protocol so you can't install the software anymore? That's when things could get a little bit tricky. We've seen this kind of thing to a degree with support of Pro Tools and Mac OS because Mac OS, despite uh, Mac users trumpeting how fantastic it is, is is pretty bad at backwards compatibility. And quite often it's like, oh, we've upgraded the operating system. You now need a new sound card because the drivers don't work in this version. Whereas Windows is actually generally, I think, better at backwards compatibility. So this is one thing you might need to keep a weather eye on. I don't think it's an enormous risk, but if you're particularly risk averse, you may see this as a bit of a problem. Now, this is one thing which I don't have an answer to is the movement of old licenses, etc., to Steinberg Activation Manager. So for the foreseeable future, I think you will need to retain your dongle if you have more than just one piece of software or whatever runs on Steinberg Activation Manager. So obviously every new release, so whenever Cubase 12 comes out, that's been announced that it will be sometime in 2022. Whenever that comes out, that will be using this, Dorico 5, Cubase 13, etc. No doubt, I would think future versions of WaveLab, etc. will use that. But if you've got legacy versions of software, I think you're still going to be carrying your dongle for a while because there's certainly been no mention of the movement of licenses from the now legacy e-licenses system to the new system. Hopefully that won't be the case. It would be good for me, I think, to have everything just in a central license pool attached to my account and then I could just uh, dip in on whatever machine that I want. At the moment, I've actually got five different dongles because I like to be able to mix and match. I have one that's got the beta versions of software on, one that's got Dorico and related things on, one that's got Cubase and related things on, another one that's got my Vienna Symphonic uh, library key. So it's those things uh, will need to be looked at, but obviously that's something for the future. But certainly I don't know anything about that. If you've read anything about that, then you know feel free to leave a comment below. But at the moment, I think there's much more concentrating on getting this system up and running for new software than there is moving legacy software across. So there you have it, a look at the initial release of Steinberg's Activation Manager. Now, as mentioned earlier on, this is only the initial release, so it only has sort of bare bones functions for standalone users. It doesn't have multi-site, multi-client, educational licenses, all those kind of things catered for yet but they are promised to be coming in the future. Now, as somebody who used to have to manage 30, 50, 60 dongles in machines and physically secure them, I think once this works well, that'll probably be pretty welcome. The question is for everyday standalone users, like hopefully you are and I am, is it an improvement? Initially, I was pretty reluctant about this. I've been using this for six, eight weeks, something like that. Uh, I was a little concerned about it, but... As I've started using it, I found it pretty good. And because of the changes which they've made in terms of licensing, it's improved. You can now activate it, not use it, but activate on three machines at the same time, which is as many as I move my dongle between for most cases. So if I need to deactivate it and put on another machine, it's not such a pain because most of the time I won't need to do that. I don't need to take a dongle with me, which means I can't leave it at home. As long as I've got the computer, I've got my license with me. And also on a machine which has only got USB-C type ports, I don't have to have a dongle for the dongle and have it stuck out this much outside of the laptop and be really, really vulnerable to sort of physical knocking, etc. I've not had any issues with activation. So obviously this has been during a beta period. So it's not been somewhere when there's a lot of demand on servers. So the one thing that remains to be seen is whether or not this service will work well on a day when software is released. Anyone who's been part of the annual rush to upgrade Cubase will probably remember when e-licensed servers have fallen down for an hour or two and it's not been possible to activate that software. Hopefully lessons have been learned there and that won't be a problem. 
that remains to be seen, and that's something we'll probably see with the release of Cubase 12 later on in the year. But hopefully this has been a useful look into Steinberg's Activation Manager and give you an idea of what you can expect when you come to either upgrade Dorico to Dorico 4 or Cubase 12 later on in the year. And if you find this useful, as ever, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.